I've not heard of Cthulhu before. I've heard of Lovecraft. I thought Lovecraft was just a game. But today I found out Lovecraft was a man, someone who wrote about Cthulhu, which is like an ancient god of old. It's like a gigantic like monster, sea monster, hydra. Hydra-like tentacles. Um, and there's games that people play. I've heard of Thoth. The very first time I heard of Thoth was since I started this journey four years ago. I never heard of him before. Uh, and the Emerald Tablets, uh, maybe a few years ago. How, you know, Thoth the Atlantean. But this tablet, they said of Cthulhu, washed up on a beach in America. And uh, they never would name the state unless someone knows the state. But look at that. It looks like it's um. I don't know you all. This 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 Cthulhu. And this Hydra, this m mythical being, which I really do not think it's mythical. I think this Cthulhu and the Call of Cthulhu. They had a following. It had a following. You all. We're going to look into it. We're going to investigate it together since. I haven't heard of Cthulhu before. I haven't. Hello there, Susan B. Honey. Um, let me come over here. Let's look at this. Um, I want to start off with the. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna bookmark everything that we went to, okay? And uh, I'll put it all at the end in this. Um, in this live stream. Hello, everyone. Bingo, Michael. Honey, you made it. You did. You made it. Let me try to see if I can find it. How did I lose it? Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm start with this one, you all. Let me pull my one thing up. Y'all, we're going to go look at this Cthulhu. Because um, that is the thing I saw. I saw the tablet. And I thought, let me show you the tablet. Well, I've got to make it bigger. Let me. I'm going to get myself out of the way. Look at this. Cthulhu look at like the writing it's really like ancient writing they don't know whether it's they don't know the age of it um, but this is the emerald tablet by Thoth you know he's like an Anunnaki looking guy um, but this one right here is it's weird it's really strange Cthulhu um, and he lives in the sea. Giant being that lives in the sea, I think. Let's go uh, right to the very beginning, you all. This is where I started. Started right here, and I thought, Cthulhu, Cthulhu, um, it's a fictional, look at this. Let's look at this. We're going we're gonna to read this. Cthulhu is a fictional cosmic entity well, right there, that's already got my attention right there. A fictional cosmic entity? No. Mm -mm. All they had to do is say the word cosmic. Uh, and that sends off alarm bells in my mind. It does. It, it just um, alarm bells. A cosmic entity created by writer H.P. Lovecraft. It was first introduced in his short story, The Call of Cthulhu. Published by the American Pulp Magazine, magazine Weird Tales, in 1928. Considered a great old one within the pantheon of Lovecraftian cosmic entities. This creature has since been featured in numerous popular cultural references. Look at that. Um, he's called the Great Old One. The Great Old One, The Call of Cthulhu. Um, have you all, have you heard of 
Daryl Calhoun. Well, probably so. Um, have you all heard of Cthulhu before? Um, today, because I haven't. I've heard of Lovecraft, but I thought that was just a video game. I didn't know it was an actual person. So what I did, you all, see, look at these images of him. Let's see if we can come over here. Look at some of these images. When I, um, after I looked a little bit more, it, it was reminded me of the beast that comes up out of the sea. You know, the beast that comes out of the sea in apocalyptic time. And um, have you ever wondered, now this is a good question, have you ever wondered why? Why haven't they explored much of the water, the oceans, the seas, and the world? Why not? What if the oceans and stuff belong to like this entity that's his domain and or other spacefaring or, you know, other species? I know I've heard of the other species that live under the water, but if if this Cthulhu, this old ancient one, lives in the sea, that would really make sense right there. It really would make sense to me if he lived in the sea. Mm. Let, let, let me, let, let's look at this, you all, because I've done a video before how much of the oceans... Um, has been um, um has been um, I don't know surveyed I don't know has been explored okay yeah explored maybe Let's see if we can get a ballpark figure here we go we got it right here um look the ocean is vast Yet only a small fraction has been explored. Sometimes menacing, sometimes serene. There's still so much to be learned about our ocean and what lies beneath the surface. There's so much to be learned about our ocean and what lies beneath the surface. Hmm. What lies beneath the surface. What if it is something like this that lies beneath the surface? Cthulhu. So, um, I better, um, I better put this in here, you all. Let me just give me a moment to put this link right here, because I'll pop them all in there at once. I will. But this Cthulhu, I want to click out of that. Uh, okay, I'm right here. Close this. I, um, let me bring my live stream over here to the edge so um, I don't um, I don't lose it, you all. Where are we at with this? <coughs> we were um, right here with these images of Cthulhu, and then I clicked into this. Let's let's look at this, you all. I clicked into this. They say that. Um, Oh, there was something that I clicked in and that I read. Let me see if I can get it. One of these things that I clicked in, I read, but I didn't I didn't mark it. It was really good. It was like a book. Okay, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it, y'all. You just have patience with Gina, honey. We can do this. The Call of Cthulhu was a book that he published back in 1928. Um, right here. So, um, look at these, um, ancient Greece. I wanted to, I saw something in here and I don't even know how I found what I found you all. This is awful because, um, what I found, it, um, it described it perfect. Perfect is what it did. The call of Cthulhu. Let me write it down. The call of C T H U L H U 
book. Okay, this is it, you are. This is it. We're going to find it right here. So let me um, let me copy this down. We're going to go to it right here. I'm going to let you see where I'm going. We're going to go. I want to read this to you because it really sounds real good. It sounds really good. So let's read it. It's like let's click it. Let's click that right there. Let's look at this. So, the call of Cthulhu. Yeah, this is really strange. So see how it looks right there. 1928. Um, H.P. Lovecraft. The ring of worshippers moved in endless bacchanal between the ring of bodies and the ring of fire. Of such great powers or beings, there may be conceivably a survival, a survival of hugely remote period when consciousness was manifested perhaps in shapes and forms long since withdrawn before the tide of advancing humanity forms of which poetry and legend alone have caught a flying memory and called them gods monsters mythical beings of all sorts and kinds this is algernon blackwood this is you are this is this is, reads really good. The horror in clay, the most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance, in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences each straining its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. But some day, the piecing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. Theosophists have guessed at the awesome grandeur of the cosmic cycle wherein our world and human race form transient incidents. They have hinted at strained survivals in terms which would freeze the blood if not masked by a bland optimism. Isn't that wow, you all? It sounds like a prophecy of like in the future when all the piecing together of the disassociated knowledge like pieces of a puzzle will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light when well, everything is brought out into the light you all that's that's really it's it that is wild it's so wild hearing that hello there susan b that's right so the call of cthulhu you all yeah this is um this is uh, really wild you all you could um you could look into this it says um yeah, I just want you all to read it because um, they're talking about a, it's um, somewhat extravagant imagination yielded simultaneous pi pictures um, in the first chapter, the horror and clay. Pictures of an octopus, a dragon, and a human character. A pulpy tentacled head, head surmounted a grotesque scaly body with rudimentary wings. And it was a sculpture. Um, they base their creation on the Cyclopean cities of the Titanic, you all. This is, it's wild. Here's what they said. Um, they're talking about these people in 1907. On November the 1st of 1907, a, um, this party was led of fellow policemen in search of several women and children who disappeared from a squatter community. The police found the victims' oddly marred bodies. 
used in a ritual where 100 men, all of a mental aberrant type, were braying and billowing and withering and repeatedly chanting the phrase, and I'm not going to chant it, after getting rid of the participants and, and they, they rested 47 people. They, inter- they integrated the men before learning the central idea of their loathsome faith. They worshipped, so they said, this is what they did, they worshipped the great old ones who lived ages before there were any men, and they formed a cult which had never died, hidden in the distant wastes, wastes and dark places all over the world until the time when the great priest Cthulhu from his dark house in the mighty city of Riley under the waters should rise and bring the earth again beneath his sway. Some day he would call when the stars were ready and the secret cult would always be waiting to liberate him. That is like, mm, and it's talking about necromancers to you all. These people look the madness from the sea. They're saying that he lives in the sea. Um, is what they say lives in the sea you all this is um, I I really hope that that type of a great old one is not alive but if it's an immortal then it is alive he never died he never died you all if he's alive he never died at all let me let me get out of that right there you all we do live in the light oh my gosh we live in the light you all where else were we saying so anyhow so we got this tablet um that washed up above the shore like you can see it right here you can see this tablet right here boom it washed up and they wouldn't say where but you know what what if that is real and i have no reason to believe that it isn't real um, I don't because we know that there's ancient cultures. There's ancient cultures. There's the lost city of Atlantis. There's a lot of history that has literally been covered. And they have the mud flood. Um, and they have a big documentary on it. The mud flood and stuff. You all look at these um, right here. Ancient artifacts. You all. What, what's, what is all of this? Oh, I need to put this in here too. You all. Let me see if I can like um, put this in here so you all know where I'm at right here. You all. This right here. There's it's the hydra like thing. He's like a hydra with his big tentacles and stuff. Look at this. I don't know if that's real or not, but it has that same type of writing on it. Can you see it, you all? Same type of writing. You remember when we went to the, um, we went to Romania and we went to this um place where they had the merry-go-round in the caverns in the mines of romania on the live webcam remember that and it had these great big tentacles there was these great big tentacles that looked like gigantic ropes but it wasn't uh reaching way way out from the ledges inside the top of this great big salt it was a salt mine a, a, a old old salt mine and the the amusement park was way 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 below and um they they kept extending and extending and extending and you know they wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and we watched that uh, we only got to document it three times and you know what they did they took the webcam down all the way down. First, they changed the camera to where you could only see like a blurred out thing of a net. And then when the nighttime came, when the visitors left, we couldn't see nothing anymore. And they took it completely down, you all. We showed way too much information. Just way too much in the caverns. It's like it's, it was awful. It was really interesting, you all. It, is, it was really, really cool. See, why do they got this stuff like this? I love love crafty and horror see how they glamorize this they do but everybody likes scary things i guess they like it you all look at clay tablets and stuff like that see these have the same type of writings on them 
How come these clay tablets have the same type of writings on them as, say, the one right here next to me of um, Cthulhu? Why does it? Is, um, are they from the same time frame, you, you know, the ancient time frame or something, you all? They could be. You, you never know what on earth. Is, this is what people making. They, they, she's like glorified, you all. Look at this. They're glorifying him. I hope that that is not real. You, you think that's real or somebody made that up? Um, but And you know what? It's just like in the movie of the Lord of the Rings when they're trying to go into that mountain. My nose is starting to itch. Ugh. They're starting to go into the mountain and this great big old thing with great big gigantic um, arm, tentacle arms. It, it grabs Frodo and he's it's it's moving him around in the air and they have to cut the arms off of it is like a hydra or something and i think they grow they grow more arms you all grows more arms uh, they pulled a carving from the sea and it's a face he thinks it's a mermaid shauna tucker honey thank you for sharing that um yes that's right you all we've got this right here um lovecraftian thing I guess see they got some pictures of some um, UFOs from all over the world. Look at that, you all. Etched in stone. Etched in stone. Can you see it? Is that not amazing? Why is there a history that they have hidden? Do they think we'll never find out? But if you remember reading earlier... Um, look at that. I would not wear that picture. I would not wear that around my neck. I wouldn't. Uh, these beings, I think they are ancient old ones, great old ones. I think they are immortal. And they do have a following and they still have power in this world. They have power in this world. You are, where are we at? Now see, we got the emerald tablets of Thoth, the Atlantan, the Atlantean. Uh, and these have pretty good um, writings in them. They do. But he, uh, didn't he destroy Atlantis? Thoth the Atlantean destroyed uh, Atlantis. Um, because they became so evil or something like that, you all. Is that what he did? Look at this. The Emerald Tablets of Hermes. Uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth below as a blow, as above, so below. And stuff like that. Hello. Um, yeah. So this one is that, but let's, let me get out of the emerald tablets, you all. Let me just get out of the, just let me see this right here. One of these I wanted to go to also. Mm, yeah, let's look at this, you all. This one, we're going to right here. I want to put this search here. I want to go to one of these in here. I like going to the um, fandom because this fandom, everybody uses it. It's like a dictionary. It's kind of like a Wikipedia, but this thing, I think, has a lot more truth to it than meets the eye. The Hydra Cthulhu Mythos. Um, and he's not. Look at this. The Hydra. Look at that. Hydra Cthulhu Eternal. They call them. Look at this. Hydra is of elemental importance to all the deep ones and is central to the social order of the species how far her contact with the sleeping cthulhu extends is not known it may be assumed that cthulhu the deep ones and hydra are day gone <sighs> what, what is this you all we're going to get ourselves in trouble i don't even know what this is i really don't what's going on here you are they're waiting for it Mm. I'm, I'm going to put this in here. I don't really like stepping into this stuff, but um, if it's, uh, if we can, it, I think it's part of everything that we've been studying. I really do. It all ties in together somehow, some way. Um, so where are we at right here? We're going to find it right here. The Hydra, the mother of the deep ones. Uh, and the children should never die, but go back to the mother Hydra. And Father Dagon, what we all come from once. Well, I don't, I'm not saying none of that, you all. I'm not. Um, so it's the deep ones. They got special powers. Um, they exist and act outside of the human imagination system. 
um, this is like a game. Oh, the call of the Hydra. They can uh, call deep ones as well as sea creatures. S dreams sending. Hydras can send dreams to humans on a limited basis. This almost always involves the immediate coastal regions of their locations, a natural knowledge. Um, look at this. So these are supposed to be characters. Hydras can summon severe storms at will, as well as doldrums, fog banks, giant waves. Um, Yogo, Sothery, elemental importance, um, mother. You all, I don't know about this because I don't play these games. Sounds like, it does sound like a game. It does, but no, I don't think it is. I don't think it's a game. The Mythical Hydra Cthulhu. Um, if you're going to edit a lot. No, I'm not going to edit nothing of yours because I don't know anything about it. Oh my gosh, it's called The Evil Doer, you all. Cthulhu is the evil doer you are. And if you play these games, the Lovecraft, I'm sure they were action-packed and scary. I couldn't do it. I really couldn't do it, you all. The Dungeons and Dragons is Dark Messiah. <gasps> is that what it is? That game, that is role-playing. That's exactly what it is. Oh my gosh, you all, we only got, we got 300 peeps in here and only 50 likes. Gina, honey, I can't give my video a, I, I can, I can give my video a like. Let me give, no, I can't give my own video a like. Um, yeah, I would. Look at this. There are innumerable tales of multi-headed monsters, all springing from the actual entity of whose real existence a few have known through the ages. The creature did not originate on earth, but in the gulfs outside. It was a vampiric entity, living not on the blood of its victims, but on their heads. Their brains, through the eons, this being has ravined in the abyss beyond our dimension, Sending out its call to claim victims where it could. For this entity, by absorbing the heads and brains of intelligent creatures, both of this world and of other planets, emerges with its powers and vitality greatly augmented, you all. Thank you. Uh, Shauna Tucker, honey. Yes, thank you all. This is this Hydra. Look, it's one of the outer gods. I didn't know that they had outer gods. Well, you know, it says, um, I think it says, indeed, there are many gods. You know, it's like if you listen to the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not have no other gods before me. That very sentence shall not have any other gods before me. That right there is indicating that there are other gods out there. Other gods out there, okay, there is. And um, the people, the people worshipped them and stuff. And they did their rituals, which is kind of scary. It really is. Um, Hydra is described as a vampiric entity. Okay, so we already seen that. Ooh, not, no, 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 you all. We're talking about the black, they're talking about black ooze. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the black ooze. Oh my gosh, you all. We got to read this because this is it's, it's described as a vampiric entity of a kind, although it feeds not on the blood of its victims, but on their heads, their brains. Um, increasing its power by devouring their brains, causing their faces to appear within the hydra. It appears an enormous sea of black ooze with a multitude of heads sprouting from it. Some human, some alien. A new one appearing once another victim's head is devoured by the hydra. The heads appear to be sobbing and grimacing as if in great agony. Oh my gosh, you all. Oh Yes, it sounds like Legion, Dark Messiah. It does. Oh, my goodness. It, the Hydra is worshipped 
by a human cult responsible for the creation of the on the sending out of the soul astral projection plant pamphlet not much is known about the cult beyond the fact that they use the pamphlet to trick people into performing sacrifices for the hydra then there is a ritual they go in astral projection and when followed the formula always works as expected harmlessly transports the user into an astral form and to whatever destination is desired however unbeknownst to the user the ritual also brings the subject into contact with the hydra which then merges with the individual's astral self using it as a host the traveler is then forced to bring somebody to the hydra oh no and you know off with their head the head is then absorbed by the hydra and appears within it and the hydra gains more power from devouring their brain afterward the astral traveler is returned safely to his or her original body suffering no ill effects except perhaps receiving a terrible shock from the grisly scene they so witnessed you all has any of this happened to you all have you had to astral have you astral traveled and this happened to you now i'm being very serious did you astro travel and this uh hydra told you to do something didn't and do you have a memory of it or do you know somebody who had a memory of being used against their will to do something they did not want in their dream state that's what i want to know because there's many a people who claim who tell you they have astro traveled mm. hydra into the geometria calculator uh, geometra calculator a t r i a <gasps> calculator uh benjamin nimick you've heard of somebody um let's let's look let's try it let's try the hydra i don't know how to read this um, but we're going to calculate the um thing i i really have no idea how to read any of this since i went into here now i've got to document this you don't tell me to go too many places because um i i can't read it triple eights christopher you all serpent the serpent the six nine the loaded to the gills queen of england orpheus baby bear triple I, I, I don't know what any of this means you all none of it um sacrifice reptilian children i don't know what any of this means you all that i look at i really have no idea about it none so i could pull this up and i have no idea i don't none of it at all that's why i don't do it um yeah the old gods that are dispelled from this realm by the one god yes let's go down here you all this one. um they did their ritual the navigation that's the end of it you all they even have this thing house of the dragon um so we've looked at that you all this hydra the wiki fandom thing the mother hydra so we don't look at this they don't have very much written on here about these elder gods right here it doesn't look like um, america lovecraft from 1890 to 1937 he created a number of fictional deities do you think they were fictional i don't think that they were fictional at all um they're depicted as immensely powerful and utterly indifferent to humans who can barely begin to comprehend them. Though some of the entities are worshipped by humans, these deities uh, include the great old ones and extraterrestrials. Um, extraterrestrial life form is a life form that did not originate on Earth itself. It means outside of Earth. The golden age of fiction i didn't know that extraterrestrial means that it is outside of earth 
Hmm. That is interesting. Um, Leo, check out the description of the Hydra and compare the last video that you did of the mouth like mass feeding of the sun you all i know i'm thinking about that with the tentacles and stuff the um the filament tubes and it looked like it was going like that you all if it really was you all um the elder things sporadic uh deities the elder gods um yeah i don't i don't think that these are they're not mythical beings you all let me just uh, put this in here again i'm gonna put this in here i'm not going to um read about that anymore because this one's coming out of here at all it is you all it's coming completely out look at these images of these um cthulhu getting uh, what happened there you all thousands of dead squid washed up on the beach in chile let's put this on here because this is the um search uh, did you all hear about that? I didn't hear about it. Dead squid. So it brung up Cthulhu. Why would they um, worship on the beach? Um, let's see what that meant, you all. So um, I can do this. It's got eggs. Um, the ten-headed dragon. Whoa! Melissa! Yes! That would make sense, wouldn't it? Because it had all those heads on it. That, that is a, I've never thought of something like that until reading this, how it absorbed those heads. Wow. Fine. So look at, that is really, um, inter, that's a different angle. Look at that. So Cthulhu Geddon, thousands of dead squid washed up. This is in 2016. Why 2016? Oh. They washed up on the shores of the Santa Maria Island over the weekend. The reason for a mass die out of these large cephalods, cephalods, cephalopods is so far a mystery. The mass death prompted health concerns locally around 10,000 decomposing squid bodies have invaded a beach. Well, they didn't invade it. They got, they got, they got killed uh, and they caused a stench. Mmm. Caused a stench. Wow, that is terrible. It really is terrible that um, they washed up. Look at this one. A mysterious hairy creature dubbed a globster washed up on a beach. Look at that. That doesn't even look like a, I don't know what it is. It's from the depths of the sea. What if they try to get these beings out of the depths of the sea? When Cthulhu comes calling monster squids washing up in New Zealand. Let's see if that pulls up something you all. Uh, fine. Um, that's 2015. Monster squid washes up. A giant squid seven meters in length from top tentacles reportedly found on the beach in New Zealand South Island. They're being killed by something you all. Um, yes. Um Sound weapons, that's right. It's killing the marine life, you all. But this Cthulhu, this Cthulhu is, um, look at that. Enormous, a dead creature. This, these look like they came from the depths of the sea. These would be way, way down there. Could you imagine if they were way, way down there at the bottom of the sea? What on earth could venture that far down and cause them to wash up on the, so the shore, you all? 2017. What would call them to wash up on the shore? It's, it's thought to be a Balian whale. Wow. No, I'm not going to see that. I'm gonna get out of that. A Balian well. A feeding ship. Pale shifting. Um, the call of... Why would they even make something? You have to ask yourself, why would they even... Why would he even feel led to make a book calling called... The Call of Cthulhu. Why would why would he even write a book um, about that? 
It's like Stephen King, and I don't like to read anything that he's wrote because I think his stuff is, to me, it does not resonate with my spirit at all. But people love him. Look at this. Cthulhu. 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 Is a cosmic being of terrifying power uh, described as being a manifestation of chaos and destruction. The God of Chaos. Who did they say was the God of Chaos? Um, who did they say was the God of Chaos? You all can't remember. Because we got some chaos that's coming and it's already Shiva. Thank you, Dark Messiah. Shiva. That's right. And that's what's in front of CERN. Shiva. Shiva with all the arms and legs. Loki. Yes, Stephen King in the mist. Why would he write that back ass words weird world? Why would why would he write a movie about the mist? It's like their mind somehow connected with these other um realms or something and they were fed it just like star trek all the different things how did they know how to write about all of that kind of stuff you how did they know oh oh i thought they said august i thought they said august death i don't know look at this uh, cthulhu's appearance is that of a colossal humanoid entity possessing both anthropodic and cephalopodic qualities he or rather it oh wow has an upper body similar to a man but possesses narrow webbed wings upon its back and its arms and legs end with clawed digits i did not know that i thought it was just an octopus i really did i thought cthulhu was like an octopus with a but he's got wings um webbed wings on his back and its arms and legs end with clawed that's right you said it legion his head is um it resembles an octopus it's largely bulbous bulbous pulsating sack numerous withering tentacles sprouting from where one would expect a mouth to be Cthulhu's height reaches hundreds of meters tall, but it is capable of altering its size and shape at will, being anywhere between the size of a man to the size of a continent and capable of spawning any number of limbs as it chooses. Oh my gosh. At the size of a continent? Um, um, let me see this. I want to read this description right here. Um, look at this. The Beast of the Sea. Let me put this uh, search in here. You are the Beast of the Sea. See, that's what, um, when I heard about Cthulhu today and um, the sea, um, the dragon stood on the so shore of the sea and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads with ten corn crowns on its horns and on each head it had a blasphemous name. Um, the beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. Um, so, um, it, I don't think it has a body. Cthulhu, but the Cthulhu, I guess, can look like anything it wanted to. And uh, Cthulhu has lots of heads. He does. Um, and it comes up out of the sea. Um... The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. And one of the heads of the beast had a fatal wound. People worship the dragon because he gave authority to the beast who is like it and who can wage it. 
Uh, he uttered proud words and blasphemies and exercised its authority for 42 months, opened its mouth to blaspheme God, slander the dwelling place and those who live in it, given power to wage war against God's holy people and conquered them, given the authority over every tribe, people, language, nation, all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life before, um, who was slain before the creation of time. If anyone goes into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed by the sword, with the sword they shall be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Then a second beast came out of the earth. Two horns and a lamb spoke like a dragon. Um, it exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf. And it made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. It performed great signs, even caused fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of people. And because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to empty the, Im, worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The number is 666. Okay, that's that beast right there in the book of Revelation, you all. We're back here to the Cthulhu with his many heads. <sighs> yeah, the call of it, the tale of Cthulhu, statues of the creature. Um, one constructed by an artist. You can't even describe uh, the thing that cannot be described is called the green sticky spawn of the stars, flabby claws, awful squid head with withering feelers, um, withering feelers. There are leaders of the cult in the mountains of China. Uh-oh. No, no, I'm just going to got to look at this. He's got flabby claws, awful squid head with withering feathers. Johnson's phrase, a mountain walked or stumbled, give a sense of the creature's scales that it has. Sound like a dragon. This is corroborated by Wilcox's dream, which touched wildly the gigantic thing miles high, which walked or lumbered about. Cthulhu is depicted as having a worldwide cult centered in Arabia, with followers in regions as far flung as Greenland and Louisiana. There are leaders of the cult in the mountains of China who are said to be immortal. Cthulhu is described by some of these cultists as the great priest of the great old ones who lived ages before there were any men and who came to the young world out of the sky. Um, they had their thing uh, where they do their sh sh whatever. Um, yeah. Look at, according to Castro, the great old ones, who came from the stars to rule the world in ages past, they were not composed altogether of flesh and blood. They had shape, but that shape was not made of matter. And when the stars were right, they could plunge from world to world through the sky. But when the stars were wrong, they could not live, but although they no longer lived, they would never really die. They all laid in stone houses in their great city of Riley, preserved by the spells of the mighty Cthulhu for a glorious resurrection when the stars and the earth might once more be ready for them. Uh-uh. They're talking about... Um, does anyone know where the city of Riley is? They're laying in the great city of Riley. Um, is where they're laying, you all. Uh, um, the great city of Riley. Let's see where it's going to pull it up. It's a sunken city. It says that it's a sunken city. 
<gasps> Let's go look at it, you all. Let's go type it. Look at this. Nemo. South Pacific. And it's the prison of the entity called Cthulhu, you all. We got to mark this, you all. Oh, no. This is really getting deep. The entity called Cthulhu, you all. Let's pull this up. I'm going to pull it up on the, let's do the Google Earth. Let's watch the round ball. Um, let's watch the round ball pull up rye lie, however you say it. Let's watch it, you all, because this is, I want to see it now. I want to see it. Pull it right up, you all. Stop it right there. Okay, let's make it really small so we can, let's shrink it down really small and let's type in this. Let's watch it pull it up. Are you all with me? Let's watch it. Let's do the search. Here we go. This is where they're supposed to be at. Where's this? No, that's not where I want to go. I don't want to go to France. I, do I want to go to Poland? You are. This is not taking us where we want to go. No, we don't want to go to the cafe. See, they don't want us to take. They don't want to take us to the right place. This took us to the right place. It is a fictional lost city that was first mentioned in the H.P. Lovecraft short story, The Call of Cthulhu, first published. In Weird Tales in February of 1928, Rai Yai, how you say it? Rai Ye is a sunken city in the South Pacific, and it's the prison of the entity called Cthulhu. A muse, I never heard of it either. I never heard of it either. Y'all, let's click it. Mm, we want to click it. Mm, look at this. This is, the, this is the location of it. Finding Nemo. Remember that? Finding Nemo. Um, it, uh, it was given by Lovecraft was, you know that this is, this is, this is the map of where it's at. 47 in the South Pacific. Um, okay, these are the different places. We're going to look it up. We're going to look it up, you all. The different places where it's supposed to be located. How come we can't see any? You know what I've noticed with this right here? Can we? Um, this is what I've noticed. When that ISS, this is, I'm, being, I'm being serious about the ISS. Oftentimes, when the ISS goes over this region right here, it has a technical difficulty and the cameras don't film at times when it goes over this area. This is really strange right there. Russian collusion. It's supposed to be make believe, but I don't think it's make believe at all. I really do not think this is make believe at all. Okay, let's get this one. Let's go to this one. Now, August Derlith placed um, this Rayel in this area. It's around the same place, just a little bit off, you all. Just a little bit off right there. It's imprisoned there, you all. Imprisoned right there. Let's go look where the other person placed it. Oh, no! That's okay. I got the history. Oh, I got the history. I got the history, you all. We got the history. I go back. Um, look at this. Right here, Nemo Point. It's all around, about in the same place. It's all about at the same place, you all. Right around in this area right here. Now, let's look. Let's go to the lightning strike map. Real-time lightning to see um, what's going on there, you all. With the real-time lightning. Let us let me do this. I'm going to see um, if they are... I got it on a 24-hour. got the counters. Let's come down here. Because that area is right... That's way too big. It's right around here. Somewhere around here is where it's supposed to be at. What's this dot? It's got some little islands right here, you all. 
um, but it's not that far up somewhere down here and I bet it's so so deep so deep in the ocean where it's at very very deep um, that's okay it's very very deep let's get back to how on earth did we get over there um, okay this is what it is they say that it was a fictional lost city it's an urban settlement they they, they lost it they said um, the call of Cthulhu it's a sunken city in the South Pacific Ocean and it's the prison of the entity look at this it's the prison of the entity called Cthulhu he's not fictional okay he's not fictional at all see they want you to think it's fictional but he's not the nightmare corpse city was built uh, in measureless eons behind history by vast loathsome shapes that seeped down from the dark stars there lay great Cthulhu and his hordes hidden in green slimy vaults why would he write such um why would he write such descriptions like that you all if he did not have some type of knowledge that was given to him because that's pretty strong and it's not like oh I adore this whatever no he's he sounds like he's telling you exactly what it is exactly look at this they describe the accidental discover Norwegian sailor Gustav Johansson right here um, narrator of one of the tales of the short story described the accidental discovery of the city a coastline of mingled mud ooze and weedy cyclopean masonry which can be nothing less than the tangible substance of the earth's supreme terror the nightmare nightmare corpse of the city of Arley, whatever loathsomely regulent of spheres and dimensions apart from ours the short story asserts the premise that we currently trapped in this place Cthulhu will eventually return with worshipers often repeating and I'm not going to say the phrase in his house at the Rai Ye. let's see how you I want to see how I cannot I, I want to know how you pronounce it because you can um, you can type in here how to pronounce it because I don't know how to pronounce it pronunciation um. well she said relay or lie I don't know how you pronounce it I don't know how you pronounce it but that's okay you all so um, he's supposed to come back the dead Cthulhu is waiting doesn't it remind you of like even like one of the Transformers movies where way down there where it's really cold they got one of the is it um, it's not Optimus Prime I don't know who it is but they bring it back to life um, Lovecraft claims that Riley Riley is located in the South Pacific Ocean and they these other people it's all they all admit that it's around listen look 5100 nautical miles from the actual island of okay let's look at this let me shrink this down from the 51 nautical miles from the uh, actual island of um, Pone a stone altar is an island of the Sinyavin Islands which are part of the larger Caroline Islands groups it belongs to Ponipai State 
uh, one of the four states in the Federated States of Micronesia, major population. So this is, um, it's 51 nautical miles from this place. And both locations are close to the Pacific Pole of inaccessibility. Imagine that, inaccessibility. They point in the ocean, the point in the ocean farthest from any land mass. Imagine that, it's a perfect grave for them to be stuck there. Metatron, thank you, uh, Taki Stavaki. Metatron, that's who I was um, wondering. Metatron, you are. We're talking about. Um, we're talking about him right here, but he's got wings on his mouth, on his back. His big tentacles. He's got lots of heads on his head. He can make himself as big as a continent, as small as a man. Um, he's a a a old great one of chaos and destruction. Is what he is. Um, he's. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Look. Rather than having science expand its boundaries. To include genuine supernatural phenomena. Through brand new theories. The alleged supernatural, supernatural phenomenon. Instead. Are instead accounted for in, sci in scientific terms. Through existing models of nature. Science is not so much embracing the supernatural as reducing it to a manifestation of the natural. Lovecraft's uh, fascinating approach to science and the supernatural is further illustrated in the fact that he reversed the usual technique for ghostly fright. And uh, rather than breaking the laws of science with supernatural means, thus generating field, he created a feeling of horror by showing that the common sense views of physics or psychics or physics and nature, uh, old new Newtonian views are the comforting fantasy. In contrast, uh, new physics, the true scientific reality, provides the source of Hera. So this is uh, this is where is this is where he's at. He's uh, buried in this city right there, this sunken city. Let me get myself out of the way. Cthulhu, right there in the sunken city. You all. Um, let's see if we can click it right here. This is where he's at. Right around here in the South, Pacific, South Pacific, way away from any land mass. Just buried, waiting to be awakened and free. He's going to get set free, you all. Oh. So, Cthulhu is... Um, A clay model probably is a prob that's probably real too you all um, could you imagine that a being like Cthulhu um, just like that look they they tried to Cthulhu crossed with an Anunnaki I don't know if this was true right here of this Cthulhu with a cross with an Anunnaki if somebody made that up or if it was in an ancient book or something, you all. I don't know. I, I sure hope he was not crossed with an Anunnaki. I do. Um, yeah. I hope he isn't. Is there like... Um, see, this right here too. Look at this. He's with this thing right here. This is Lovecraft. It looks like he's in a place where it's really cold what do you think that is I'm sure it's not make-believe um, that's right I'm sure it's not make-believe you all all of that they have so much history out there they really do what on earth is that oh no Cthulhu something this is a statue I wonder if that's real too is he, could you imagine this right here coming at you the sea monster we don't okay and we when we, we we spoke earlier the vast majority of the ocean has not been um, 
explored. And um, there's probably a very, very good reason, like right here. That's why they dare not go there. And you think anybody's allowed in the South Pacific? Did they say the South Pacific? Yeah, I think they did. South Pacific. South Pacific. Um, P-A-C-I-F-I-C. -I -I um, vortex. Let's see if there's a vortex in the South Pacific. Well, uh, it's a tr there's a trash vortex uh, there. Um, snow. No, I I'm not fixing. No, there's no South Pacific portal. Let me see portal. Let me say portal. Uh, portal. Anomaly. Okay, let's do a South Pacific anomaly if there is one. We got a South Atlantic anomaly, but um, not a South. So the South Pacific Anomaly is an area where the Earth's inner Van Allen radiation belt comes closest to the Earth's surface, dipping down to an altitude of 200 kilometers, 120 miles. And the South Atlantic Anomaly is an area where the Earth's inner Van Allen, Allen radiation belt comes closest to the Earth's surface, dipping down to an altitude of 120. So... That, that's South Atlantic. I thought it said South Pacific. No, I, I, I want to know about the South Pacific, you all. The South, the longevity of the South Pacific Isotopic Thermal Anomaly. It's a bad gateway. I guess we can't go there to the, um, the longevity of the South Pacific Isotopic Thermal Anomaly. Uh, it is an anomalous in terms of SRND PB isotope ratios of its hot spot basalts, uh, a thermally enhanced lithosphere, and possibly a hotter mantle. We have studied the SR, the ND, the PB isotope characteristics of the 12 Cretaceous seamounts in the Magellan's, the Marshall, and the Wake seamount groups, Western Pacific Ocean, that originated in the South Pacific Isotopic and Thermal Anomaly. Uh, so there's something there. That's where he's, um, that is where um, Cthulhu is held in his prison. Um, Okay, you all. I didn't know that it's going to click into that, but we'll click into it, you all. It, I, I'm just trying to um, just, you know, do this. Let's see what NASA or USGS has to say about it because we want to know. We, we want to know. So we're going to find out. The longevity, this is 1991, of the South Pacific Isotopic and Thermal Anomaly. Um, it has uh, hot spots, hot spot basalts, thermally enhanced lithosphere, possibly a hotter mantle. We have studied it um, that originated in the South Pacific Isotope Topic Thermal Anomaly, SOPITA. The range and values of the isotope ratios of the Cretaceous Seamount date are sim data are similar to those on the island chains of Samoa, Tahiti, Marques, Cook, Austria. They define two major mantle components, suggesting that the isotopically extreme lava has been produced at the Sopitia for at least 120 ma shallery bathymetry, a weakened lithosphere beneath some of the sea mounts. Um, studies suggest that at least some of the thermal effects prevail during the Cretaceous as well. Um, it is a long-lived feature and enhanced heat transfer into the lithosphere. Uh, isotopically, an anomalous mantle appeared to be an intrinsic characteristic of the anomaly. The less pronounced depth anomaly uh, suggests that uh, some expressions may be controlled by the direction of the plate. Um, there might be something to this. The longevity of it, it sounds like it has not changed at all. Both my ears are red, you all. That's right. Um, let's, well, there it is right here. 
images of it. Let's find out what it looked like, you all. This is giving me such a hot flash. Ugh. What is there? Free air gravity anomaly map. Um, I can't read these maps. That's the South Atlantic. I want the um, a deep water fire anomaly in the Pacific. A fire anomaly in the Pacific. Um, oh, well, that's about right. That's it, you all. We're looking at this monster right here. <sighs> yeah. I hope that uh, Cthulhu doesn't exist, but I have a pretty good feeling that he does exist. And one day he's going to come out of his uh, place where he's been imprisoned and, and hidden away. He's going to come out. Who's going to bring him out? Who can bring him out, you all? Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Yes, we got uh, lots of stuff in there, you all. We really do. So this is um, what he was described to look like. Big, like, tentacle, claw, fingers, um, big wings, and just monstrous looking, you all. Very monstrous. Ugh. Mmm. I don't know if I want to live in a world where he lives. I don't. I really don't think I want to. I really don't. Um, so I am going to be going. That's it. I'm, I'm done talking about um, Cthulhu's tablets. We got Thoth's emerald tablets. Um, Thoth has a spaceship underneath one of the pyramids. He does. And when the time comes, when the invaders come again, I think according to the emerald tablets uh his ship will be used to fight him off again or something like that and um what if his ship is on earth there's must be other ships on earth too you all godzilla is real oh my goodness yeah that's all right you all that's fine so if you hadn't heard of cthulhu i never heard of him but um he's known as one of the great old ones uh, chaos and destruction and uh, he can make himself as big as a continent and he can make himself as small as a man I think some one of these other gods could be like as small as a bird but this one said as small as a man and they described him with uh, the Lovecraft and I don't think it's uh, make-believe and he's supposed to be imprisoned uh, way down in the South Pacific in a place called Riley. Uh, that's where he's at. And one day he's going to be released and his followers are waiting. They're just waiting for that day to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, you better put on your full armor. That's right. Um, so I am going to go, you all. This was interesting. It really is. I don't, I don't think I would um, want to play a game. I'm going to cover his face up. Let me put my face right there. Uh, I'll, I'll get right back next to Thoth the Atlantean. i uh, rather do that. Yeah, let me do this. And We don't want to talk about Cthulhu anymore. There we go. Um, right there, Cthulhu. So that was an interesting topic, and I wanted to read about it. I really did. I wanted to explore it together, you all. It's a great ending. It really is a great ending to my day. Yeah. Oh, you all so welcome. Thank you all for um, being interested. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Susan B. and Apple Brooks. Thank you. That's right, you all. This all, I think everything that we cover, it all is like a piece of the puzzle. It really is. It all fits together somehow some way it does yeah so um with that being said hello wherever you are in any part of the world hello from my heart to yours love you have a wonderful rest of your 
evening. And thank you once again. Good night.